John Sullivan. Everybody see me okay? Good. Um, all right, so last week, we, uh, Tasha, to your point, um, we went deep on, on some of the digital marketing tools that we have at, at eXp KB Core with the ClickFunnels. You know, that stuff, uh, we'll keep on going deeper on that. And, and Tasha, if you don't mind, I might pick your brain on the next session. So like maybe share our screen and go into like how we're creating some click funnels and, and how that works with some of the automation. Um, and then we went on my link, my lead. So that one is not out for everybody. I am testing it. Me and Amanda are going to get it rocking and rolling. Um, there, it's in beta tested right now, but it's like a game changer for you, TV, somebody that's going to be like a world traveler and, and still run a business, that's going to be a great way to monetize your, your relationships around the country. And same thing with you, Melissa, being in Oklahoma. Uh, but today I wanted to talk about mindset because there is a lot of headwinds and I just hear a lot of the, the language out there being used by real estate agents. It's a bad year, inflation, interest rates, all this stuff. And like, if we're surrounding ourselves with people who are, constantly in that space right like the truth is the truth the facts are what the facts are right we have higher interest rates we have inflation we have a slower market and 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 people are generally not selling but that is sort of like the the self-fulfilling prophecy right because we're not hitting our, our goals we're not having our sales i know lots of other people that are having incredible years right so the difference between them and the people who are not selling is honestly, the people who are not selling are not doing the work, are not taking the action. And they're probably hanging around with a lot of people who are saying the same thing around the water cooler. I don't even know if they're water coolers anymore, but we'll talk about that, right? Um, they're just hanging out with folks that are in that headspace. And it's so important to sort of keep that mindset in a way that's gonna keep you productive and taking action towards your goals. So a lot of us, you know, they were told and like, we, and everybody talks about positive mindset. Like, yeah, but it's real hard to be positive when you ain't making it right. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe a significant others left you like you know, whatever it is. Like, so, so today is about, let's talk about um, the state of mind, how it works. But then I'm also going to share some tools with you that I use just to keep in that space and know this, like not that, it, it's never going to be perfect, right? I can't teach you how not to be a human being. Like the human being, the, the first thing, hey, John, good to see you, brother. Um, the first thing that when you have a, a thing or an adversity, and adversity is just something that happened that either didn't go the way you wanted to or went the opposite direction. And so we're going to have adversities until the end of our days. And it's really up to us how we, we, we react to those, right? And so the, the initial reaction is going to be most likely a negative thing, right? We're going to feel angry. We're going to feel upset. We're going to feel like lashing out or maybe quitting. But the key is to get off of that channel as quickly as possible, right? Because some people, there's old sermon, like pain is inevitable or suffering's a choice, right? After a while, right, you're going to have some pain. But after a while, if, if, uh, if you keep on suffering, that's your choice, right? to stay in that, in that mindset. So the goal is to switch off that channel as quickly as possible. In some cases, you know, that, that adversity or that negative reaction to that adversity could last a couple of years, right? For some people, right? That's that suffering. Um, it could last a couple of months, it could last a couple of weeks. So our journey here today is to give you some tools. I'm going to share my screen and go through a presentation that I use in my coaching program. I mentioned earlier before I started recording, that charge, you know, a thousand dollars a month on this thing. You guys are going to get it for free today. And so it's getting off that channel as quickly as possible so that we're making, taking action toward, towards our goals. Make sense? Yes. All right, cool. So let me share my screen. And then again, I, when I share my screen, I'm not going to be able to see you. So just interrupt me and you holler at me and um, we'll get those questions answered. All right. So the thing is, um, a lot of times we have this thing, uh, not a lot of times, but we do. We all have this thing called a precept. And a precept is just something that we made up at some point in time. Might have been a long time ago, might have been recently. 
right? And then we go out into the world to find examples to support the thing that we made up in the first place. And a precept, for example, could be somebody who says, I'm shy, right? Um, and then they'll go out and, and maybe it happened when they were a kid, right? They, they got introduced to somebody by their parents and they just didn't talk. And all of a sudden the parents are calling them shy. They hear that about themselves. And now this becomes their truth, right? Again, it becomes the truth. And then they go out in the world to find examples to support the thing that they made up in the first place. And so that truth to them is I'm shy. So they'll go, maybe they're 20 now and they go to a party, they'll sit in the corner. They won't talk to anybody. And at the end of the night, see, I didn't meet anybody. I'm shy. And we have all these precepts in our lives, like, um, and in our business, right? Sometimes these precepts could be like, I'm not smart enough. I don't know. I don't have the background in order to sell luxury homes, right? Um, I don't have the connections to sell investment properties or build, you know, sell $10 million of real estate. I even had a guy who said, Hey man, open houses only work for women. Right. And, um, when I dug into it, like, you know, it was, he tried an open house, didn't work out, saw that somebody else had, uh, had an open house in his office person happened to be a woman and a great, and he just created this truth. Right. And it became his truth. Like only open houses work for women. What a silly thing, right? <laughs> open houses work for everybody if you have a system and you do it well and you do it consistently. But that became his truth. And then he went out in this world and his universe and found examples to support the thing that he made up in the first place. So he would do another open house, didn't work out, went to the office, saw that a woman did it. Yeah, they were successful, right? Because there's this concept of reticular activating system where we go out and see things that we're act our brains are activated to. And unfortunately, a lot of times we have these precepts and they're working in opposite direction of our goals. So we got our goals up here. Yeah? We want to sell $10 million in real estate, but we had this precept that says, all right, open houses don't work for me. I don't, I don't have the connections. I don't have enough money to advertise like the, the top agents in our, in our market. Um, I don't have the know-how, whatever it is, we have these precepts. And so we know what to do. We even know how to do it, right? We know how to sell real estate. We know how to go after clients. We know what to do, but somehow we're still not doing it. And the thing that's holding us back, slowing us down and stopping us from doing the things we want to do are these precepts. And that's where frustration comes in because we'll start making progress towards our goals, right? We want to go over here and we start selling some real estate and all of a sudden we stop and get pulled back, right? And it's this sort of, pulley system, right? And and we can all have it, right? You know, TB, you might be worried about like, hey, am I going to be able to sell real estate from, from another country, right? Whatever that is, there's people who who blaze the path before you, but it's these precepts. So the key for us is to understand that we have these precepts and instead of them having go and push in the other direction, line them up, right? With your goals so that we're pulling, we're in alignment and we're heading in, in the same direction. Um, and so the key with all of this is understanding how our mind works. And so this symbol here, this circle here symbolizes our mind and there's two halves of our mind, right? Not just mind. And that's the part that we're very aware of. It's the part that says, Hey, I got to show up on this call at noon, right? Or I've got that list of appointment at 1 PM with John. However, the part that's so much more powerful is the subconscious mind. And that's what I want to spend the time on it. And it's everything goes into our subconscious mind as truth, right? It doesn't know the difference between, between truth or a lie. It just comes in as, as a truth. And then we go out, you know, because we're not even aware of some of all this, these impetuses and, and, and stimuli that are coming into our mind, but it comes in as true doesn't know the difference between truth and light. It's all true. And then we go on to the universe and find examples to support the thing that we made up in the first place. And the thing is those things, and by the way, universe is everything outside of us. Those things can be positive or negative. Right. And so for instance, let's, let's take an example. Have you guys ever heard of like somebody who goes to um, a faith healer, right? Has a disease, goes to faith healer and and gets the hands laid on them or they drink uh, uh, holy water. And I was Catholic, I grew up, so 
heard a lot of stories about holy water and then they're healed right of, of incredible diseases like cancer or disabilities anybody ever heard of that just shout out because i can't see you somebody anybody yes, oh yeah no. yeah for sure right and so that's that's a hugely powerful thing and, and we know when you analyze the water like it's not the water's no different like, what we know is the belief the faith that you will be healed is what changes you right so that's a hugely powerful thing that the mind does so it, and that's a hugely positive thing so if the mind can do such positive things the opposite is also true right that it can do some negative things and so we got to guard our thoughts and the thing is um where we, we talk about truths things coming into our minds as our subconscious mind as truths where do you think these truths come from i'm talking about that word truths a lot anybody it's like our upbringing family awesome cool and and, and all that is true i'm going to give it a different word to it john conversations and it's true it comes from your upbringing your background but it's the conversations that we're having and most of them are not spoken a lot of them are internally that we're having and for instance on average we're having to 300 to 800 words per minute conversations every hour 300 to 800 words per minute every hour and most of those are not spoken out loud they're internal conversations right in fact, I'm doing a lot of talking right now, but you guys are sitting there having a hell of a lot more conversations about like, Guillermo, what the hell does this have to anything to do with real estate, right? Like, so like th this is understanding how your mind works will help you in your business, will help you with your relationships, being a better father, mother, uh, significant other. Because if you understand how we human beings work, you can, you can control your actions and control what you do and how you react to things. So these truths, are, are made are, are coming from our conversations our internal conversations and they're all made up not the thing that happened right but the meaning that we give to it they're all made up but they're made up until the point in time they enter into our subconscious mind and then they become true they become your truth and then again you go out in your universe and find examples to support the thing that you made up in the first place and the evidence of that is what we call RAS reticular activating system so the best example of this is if somebody say you're thinking about buying a new car and you decide hey i want a tesla right i want an electric car and maybe before you didn't notice any teslas out there but now you're everywhere you drive you see them everywhere right your mind is activated to it for those of you who are mothers you find out that you're pregnant then all of a sudden you notice pregnant women everywhere. It's not like they just decide to get pregnant just right there and then, it's that your mind is activated to it. And so that's a real science of a term, you guys experienced it. That's how our mind works. We'll have these internal conversations. I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough advertising, I don't know how to do this, I don't know how to use chat GPT AI, I'm too old to use AI. We can go on and on all these internal conversations then then become our precepts that slow us down and hold us back from achieving the things that we want to achieve and then we go out in the universe and find examples of that like see there's another person who's too old to use ai i can't do it either all right i heard the other day somebody who's like i'm too old to sell real estate i can't you know i i, I can't do it I went to a conference where there was a 90 year old woman had talked about at, at 875 she wanted to sell 20 million dollars in real estate and she made it happen right she had a different story she had a different conversation about what was possible so what i want you to look and, and and again i want you to come from this place of possibility right oftentimes when we're learning new things we come from this place of i agree or disagree um a better way to listen is like is it possible that I can use this and will improve the way I work, the way I live, the way I interact with other human beings, right? And then try it on for 90 days. And if it works, great, that's awesome. Now you've got that, that new tool for the rest of your life. If it doesn't, give it right back. But what this circle symbolizes, and this is where I'm gonna ask you to listen from that place of possibility, symbolizes is life. Imagine these arrows are not in there right now, just life. And what I'm gonna say is life is empty, 
and meaningless until we, the human beings, put the meaning in. And that meaning is usually related to some sort of situation that we're dealing with at the point in time, right? And so life is empty, empty and meaningless until we, the human being, put the meaning in. And it's usually based on the situation and it's all made up. Now, I'm going to. I'm going to give you a deeper understanding of what I mean by made up. So like Guillermo, don't, don't tell me that the fact that my client terminated that listing contract, that's not made up. They did that to me, right? That's not what I mean. The is, I call that the is, the fact, right? The fact that this thing happened, some adversity, that the listing contract got terminated, the buyer that you were working with bought another house, um, somebody cheating you, that's not made it up, right? Or I got injured, that's not made up. It's the meaning that we give to that thing is all made up. And then we go out in the world to find evidence to support that, rather than positive and negative. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. So like when I, when I say something's made up, it's not the thing that happened. It's not that the sun is hot, the sun is hot. That's the fact. It's the meaning you give to the fact that it's a hot day. For instance, one meaning could be very positive, right? It could be, hey, it's hot outside. I'm going to get my tan on. I'm going to go jump in the pool. I'm going to go down to the beach. Um, I'm going to go exercise outside because it's been cold all winter long. I'm going to get out. So that's one meaning you can give to that, to that thing, right? The other one could be like, oh, it's hot outside. I'm sweaty. My hair is frizzing out. I, I, this is miserable. I'm so uncomfortable. Same is right? The sun is hot or it's a hot day, but we're giving it two different meanings, right? Positive or negative. Now, are, are you guys ready for the, for the, the, the secret of life, the meaning of life? I need to hear. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. yeah. You ready? Oh, sorry. Oh, I would jump ahead. Life is a conversation. It's all made up. When I talk to my nine-year-old, she knows this. This I ask her what the meaning of life is. She'll she'll pair it back to me. So take this on, give it to your kids. A lot of you I know are parents. Life is a conversation. It's all made up. Not the is, but the meaning we give to the is. And our job, your job, is to create up a conversation that empowers you. Right. Again, I repeat, I'm not saying the thing that happened to you is made up. That's the fact. The meaning you give that to is all made up. You have the power to give it a positive or a negative meaning. This, the world's full of examples of people who have had major accidents to the part that they're disabled. Right. Some of those people will then go out there and inspire others to live an incredible life. You've seen them, they, they're on stage, they're speaking, they're writing best, best novels out of an event that most people be like, that's, that's hugely negative. And then you know, probably other people who got disabled and they crumble up and this, disappear, their relationships fall apart, they're, they're, they're hermits. Same is, but two different meanings, right? So our job is to create a conversation that empowers me and by empowers me, I mean, get me onto the top level of this mood chart. So this is one of the tools that I talked about is sort of just being aware, right? We've got feelings associated with different levels. So we got a high level and some of the feelings that we can feel at the high level are things like high optimism, feeling cheerful, feeling joyful, feeling peaceful, um, playful. I think that is the key to relationships, right? Keeping your relationship playful will lead to a healthy relationship. On the mid level, you've got other feelings like feeling sad, feeling like victimized, I'm bored, I'm angry. And then low level, you got things like blame, remorse, vengeful, right? Feeling betrayed, overwhelmed, frustrated, ashamed. I got to ask you, a lot of us have big goals out here. Where do you think we need to be operating in order to reach those goals? On the high level, mid-level, low level? Somebody shout out. Definitely, Definitely high. high. Yeah. 
Like our, our goals don't reside on the low level, right? Our goals reside at the high level. So we need to be operating at this high level. So when we're having conversations, we need to be having conversations that empower us and empower us means being at this high level. Who out there can give me a definition of law of attraction? Anybody? I mean, uh, my opinion is what you put out in the world is what you get back. Awesome. That's great. And so what I would say, and feel free to write this down. We'll have it recorded. What you consistently think about and put your energy on, guys, you will attract from the universe consistently, right? We're, we're all made of atoms, right? I'm made of atoms, you're made of atoms, the wall behind you guys are, are made of atoms. And we atoms vibrate and they vibrate at a frequency. And so when we're vibrating up here, things like we're grateful for what we have, then we're gonna vibrate and attract from the universe other things to be grateful for. If we're vibrating at the, man, I'm feeling overwhelmed, we're gonna get more things to feel overwhelmed about. And you guys know instinctively you've experienced this in your life, right? When you're operating and you're you're playful and you're cheerful and you're joyful and you're selling a lot of real estate, then more clients come out of the woodworks, right? Other things in other parts, you're like your relationship is humming, right? You're you're connecting with your friends, your significant other. You're just rocking and rolling. The opposite is you probably also be experienced to be true. When you're depressed or you're acting out of uh, out of scarcity and maybe you're not selling as many real real estate transactions as you like to then other things start falling apart out like you know your your other deals start falling apart your health maybe suffers uh you're getting fights with your significant other more often than than, than maybe you had in the past it's because we have an internal gauge to understand where we're operating whether we're on the high level mid level and low level and that's our feelings what we are feeling is what we are thinking about. So that's the other tool. So we talked about what conversations we're having in, in our head. The way to know whether we're operating on a high level is to just be very aware of how you're feeling. So when something bad happens and it's going to happen, right? Some adversity is going to happen. Our, our initial reaction is going to be, is going to be a negative one. And you're going to have that feeling. Our job is to switch off of that channel as quickly as possible. So I'm not saying think positive all the time. I'm not, we're not, you know, we're not zombies, right? It's going to be the, and, and you're not going to be perfect at this all the time. But as I started out before saying is like, if, if that listing contract being terminated or finding out that your cousin bought with some other agent, even though you've been running around, running them around for 18 months, Right. You know, maybe that's happened to one or two people on this call. When you find that out, the first feeling is going to be angry. Right. Or or maybe vengeful or like just frustrated. Like it happened to me again. My cousin did me over again. Um, and and we just need to know that, that we're going to be operating at the low level and the middle level. And our job is to get ourselves as quickly as possible back up to the high level. So maybe in the past it was, you know, we might've stayed there for months. And now because of what we're learning about ourselves, maybe it's just a couple of weeks and the weeks becomes days, days becomes hours, hours become minutes. All right. And understand that we control the power of what we put the meaning on it. So when, when we lose the listing, there's a great um, quote by Napoleon Hill uh, that I live my life by. And it says, in every adversity lies the seed of an equivalent or greater benefit. And that's our job, guys and gals, right? Um, is to think about that adversity and rather than focus on that adversity, because that's going to, if we focus on adversity, we're going to feel down here. We're going to be in this low level. We want to be focusing on, all right, what's the seed of an equivalent or greater benefit that we can uh, take out of this experience? And I'll share one with you. And I'm going to stop sharing so I can see your beautiful faces. There we go. Um, 
I, I went on it. I was rocking and rolling, man. I was, I was getting a bunch of listings one week. I, I remember it was probably one of my record weeks. I, was, I had 10 list appointments. I got in nine and I was going into 10th um, that, that Sunday on Mother's Day. First mistake. I was going out on Mother's Day. Shouldn't have done it. Um, I get there and I made the mistake on, uh, well, you know, I learned that my pricing technique wasn't what it needed to be. I lost the listing based off of price. And so, man, I was pissed, right? Like I was so angry about it. And, you know, that's a perfect example, like not getting that listing. That could be your more wallowing. And, and maybe in that case, I did. I don't know how much I wallowed, but I wallowed. And it could have been wallowed for a week or so. But the seed of an equivalent of greater benefit in that instance, and when I got out of it, I figured it out, like I went in, out and found a method that I can use to never lose a listing ever again based on price. And I did, Sue Adler, thank you. I've, I've, uh, I've sung your praises a couple of times over the years up in North Jersey. It's, uh, I forget what she calls it, but I call it sort of uh, the self-discovery process, right? Which I'll teach a class on that again. I've taught it multiple times, but I'll teach it again. But that's the type of thing I'm talking about, the seed of an equivalent or greater benefit. What can I take from this adversity? So we can wallow and get pissed off that I lost that lost that listing, or I can go out and find a process or a system that will make my business better, right? So just think about that, like everything, like you know, whether it's um, you know the the method in the way I I went my my listing conversation, I lost lots of things because the the client took it sideways. And so like, all right, I got, I got to have a much more structured system so I can make sure that I control the process. Uh, every single thing that you come across in your business, you will be like, all right, cool. That didn't work the way I wanted to. Now I need a system and a process to put it in the way. And by the way, the great thing about our group, Rebs, we got it all ready, right? So you just got to swipe and deploy, rip off and duplicate R&D. But that's, the, that's what you got to do. It's literally think about Focus on the seed of an equivalent greater benefit rather than diversity. So that's one of the tools sort of keep you on that higher level. A um, couple other tools, and I'll circulate the PDF. There is a, a book by Esther Hex, uh, Asking It Shall Be Given. But in there, there's, I forget the number, but 30, 28, 30 tools that you can use when you know you're operating on the mid-level or low level, how they get to the high level. So I'll give you some of my favorites. One of them is just, um, I've got a playlist on Amazon called Happy Thoughts. Like they're just songs and I'm not gonna tell you what the songs are because a lot of them are a little cheesy, I you know, admit. Um, that when I play them, I can't help but smile. I'll little, I, I will give you a, a little, little tip. A lot of it's Prince, like Prince just gets me happy, man. Like, so when I play Prince, I just can't help. Uh, but. Find those songs that, you know, just draw you and create a playlist. There are moments in my life that I go back in memories. So I got my go-tos where um, I'm the, I was the last male solace in my family. And so I wanted my name to carry on beyond me. And so that moment, sonogram, when I saw that I was having a, a son, boom. That's a memory. I, when I'm, I'm not feeling good, I go back to that. I close my eyes and I sit there and I think about that. My son catching a touchdown, my daughter ice skating, my son playing piano, whatever it is. A lot of it revolves around my family for me personally, but you are each your different people. You'll find your thing that motivates you and that gets you happy. But those are like, those are the really good ones I, I go back to. When you're driving around, another technique um, is a red light. It's just to say something that you're grateful for when you're at a red light. Because gratitude, like a lot of us, especially in the social media world, man, we'll, we'll be looking at others and be like, they got what I want and I don't have that. And that lack, that, that living in the gap, that's just going to give you more, you know, that negative vibration of stuff to not be grateful for, right? Or things that you're, you're, you're lacking. So we want to be grateful, like, and simple things like, hey, I pulled up, I got a good parking spot right in front of Primo's. Love it, right? And I drive around the block a bunch of times. It doesn't have to be a huge thing, but that grateful, like you're driving around red lights or if you're door knocking, I used to do the like red door. Every time a red door, sometimes I'm grateful for it. 
Cool. They, they call this other one a placemat. Like when you're feeling overwhelmed, there's this exercise where you're placemat. You take all the stuff that you want to do, that you're doing, and uh, and then on the other piece of paper, the things that, that you're doing right now that you don't want to do, and write them over there. And the placemat's like, here, I want the universe to take care of that. And just leave this other piece of paper, the things that you're going to take care of. And I got to tell you, man, it sounds, and I tell you, I thought it was voodoo. I didn't want to believe it. I, I'm like, I, I, you might be skeptics out there. I'm like, Guillermo, you've lost it, man. <laughs> you've gone cuckoo, cuckoo, like crazy. It works. Unfortunately, my wife hadn't read that book before I read it. And some of the things that I put on that list, she came up to afterwards like, hey, hey, Guillermo, I, I took care of that thing. I'm like, oh, boy, this place, man, thing works. <laughs> so hopefully she doesn't ever watch this video. But um yeah, it does work. So uh, a couple of tools for you guys to use. Um, oh, there is one that I also love is um, she uses an example. Uh, Esther is, is the author I'm talking about. Use the example when, when you're in a place to just go to like, what are the beautiful things that you're observing? And she uses one of the most mundane, like painful scenarios, like going to the post office and waiting in line in the post office to do whatever, right? Like that doesn't sound fun, like the DMV, right? That doesn't sound fun, but it's finding the beauty in that, in that moment. And so for her, she brought an example of like, hey, I noticed there in line in front of me is a mother with a daughter, they're holding hands and they're smiling at each other. Like those little moments, just focus on the the, the high level things, right? Because there's a lot of ugly out there and you know those people who just focus on the ugly, right? Those energy vampires, you don't want to be around those. But yeah, like the sun is 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 coming in that window and it's putting a cool pattern on the wall, whatever it is. It's sort of just, it's uh, I forget the term she used on it, but it's um, oh god, you know what? I can't remember this. But that's the concept, the tool behind it is like just focusing on like the beautiful moments and what it otherwise is a not so beautiful scenario or environment. Make sense? So life is a conversation. It's all made up. Not the is, but the meaning we give to the is. It can be positive or negative, All right? All right, I'm gonna ask you, what did you hear? If I was to ask you to put in your own words, what did you hear? And I'll start with you, Christine. You mean the summary of today of what you just said? What you heard. Yeah. Okay, so basically, I've learned that, um, you know, as soon as you wake up, you have to have a, a positive mindset, because if you do, good things will happen towards the day. That's what I learned. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. And 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 here's the thing. We now, I just have to start implementing it, because sometimes, you know, you just wake up in a bad mood, and it just doesn't work. If, you, if you're like that so yeah it's well, important I, to just be positive well and that and that's why i wanted to do this because a lot of us you hear all the positive mindset positive mindset out there in in, in the in the uh the world but nobody tells you how right nobody gives you the tools to, to do that so that i really i wanted to use that because we're hearing a lot of that out there right now like i can't sell real estate this market is crap like hey the market is what it is it's up to us and that's the good news right because if it was up to something else, then we we got no control over changing the stuff for us. It's up to us, right? Definition of responsibility 100%. is is seeing myself as cause and the ability to change the things around me. And that's the good news. Because if it was the other way, man, I, I can't control nothing. That's a that's a bleak world to live in. How about you, John? What did you hear? Uh, goes back to where you were starting out and pretty much our outlook not only on life and ourselves is we determine that. We determine if we're uh, 
looking at stuff in a negative way or we can't do something versus having the look and the belief like, hey, I got this. I can do this. I'm the best. I mean, in a sense, in this business, uh, I've always treated sales like you have to be a bit of a narcissist uh, and think that I am the best. I'm better than the other agent. I deserve that listing. And by putting that energy of I'm going to do a certain amount of business, it just kind of manifests itself. Um, I, I learned years ago when uh, things are slow, uh, get busy and become real, real estate centric. Go preview houses, dive into real estate, and that energy of being around these homes for sale, all of a sudden, I get a call from somebody, hey, can you help me buy something or list something by putting the energy out there that I'm in this game and I'm the best. So as far as what you were discussing about, uh, maybe our past doesn't define who we are, but uh, we do. Absolutely, man. Amen. Yeah, man, it's it's incredible. Like what we put out there will absolutely uh, come come back to us. How about you, Tasha? What did you hear? Um, well, I heard a lot of things that I personally believe in as a person. Um, <clears throat> I don't, no one here knows, but I suffer from ADHD. It's quite bad. Um, so for a long time, I had to kind of figure out how do I stay productive in my life knowing that this is a quote unquote issue for me um, and solving those things and waking up in the morning and being very positively focused on purpose, um, I found was actually the biggest thing that helped me. Um, when I woke up in the morning, I always made sure I had a plan. I always made sure I pulled out my planner and I wrote down my day. And I was extremely intentional and extremely positively focused about how I thought the day was going to go. And I found that that basically changed my whole life um, because it gave me a completely different outlook on the way that I went about just doing things normally in my life. And, and like you said, just thinking at that high level and believing that regardless of whatever you have or is going on, there's always a way to step past the quote unquote negatives that you see in your life, especially if you wake up with that intention and stay very positive. Um, I have a really quick example, if you don't mind me sharing. Um, this oh, actually happened with my husband the other day, his dad was visiting from Florida. So he was staying with us for about 10 days. Um, he had showings canceled that day um, because the houses went under contract and he wasn't going to be going out anymore. He was a little annoyed about it, you know, because he thought one of those houses was going to be the one for his client. Um, so he decided that he was going to detail his car. He pays for this two, three times a year. And he was like, you know what? I can do this myself. I'll save the money. It'll be great. He did it. Took him a couple hours, but he did a great job. Um, he closed the doors and went to start up the car and the car did start um, because he had the doors open the whole time. The car battery actually died. Um, and he was he was so upset about it. Um, but I said to him, you know, don't be so upset. We got a Walmart right down the street. You can, you know, jump it. His dad actually ended up helping us. Now, you guys don't know my husband. He's wonderful. He's not exactly a car savvy guy. So, you know, after it was all over, I looked at him and I said, you know, instead of being so upset, you should, one, be really thankful that your dad was here because that solution came a lot quicker than it would have otherwise. And, you know, the money that you ended up spending on that battery is what you saved by detailing the car yourself. And the truth is that battery was probably going to die at some point soon anyway. It died in the best place possible, and it died when you had the best help to find your solution in a very short period of time. Um, so just kind of, like you said, just looking at those little adversities and instead of being upset about it, really searching for the positive things that actually happened in the moment and letting everything else just fall yeah. off the shoulder. It's fine. So the work that we're going to be doing together for forever, uh, I, I put into two different categories. And there's what I call the beingness, and then there's the doingness, right? A lot of real estate agents want to do the second one, the doingness. Like, and what I mean by that is like, hey, how do I get more clients? How do I do this system? How do I do chat GPT, AI? How do I do other the, the doingness is important, but none of it matters unless you got it straight on the beingness, right? 
You could be the best technician in the world, know how to do and sell real estate better than anybody in the world. But if you don't have it right between the ears, what I call the beingness, our state of being, then we'll never accomplish our goals. Just won't, right? Because we'll hit some adversity, because we all do. And then we'll just shut down. And so, well, that's what that's why I'm I'm really excited to have um, Ed be part of our group because that guy is powerful with that stuff. And so he'll he'll bring his his own flavor and, and teachings on it. You know, same 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 topic, but just a different way of hearing it that might touch you or touch other people differently. And so, the beingness, I gotta tell you, a lot of real estate agents like Guillermo. I want to sit down and learn what you do. It starts with this, and they're like, no, 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 tell me, tell me the the secret juice. Right. Give me the, the that script that you use in order to get that. Like, man, none of that matters unless it's straight in between the ears. And if it's straight between the ears, your business is going to rocket fuel. It's going to go up. But more importantly, right, because having a business that's super successful without having the other aspects of it, good relationships, good health, um, it's not worth having. Right. So this is have the business you want to serve the life that you want make sense cool we got a couple more minutes but got to get before i gotta jump in a car and head out to an appointment uh but can i ask a question yeah go ahead melissa okay so i am actually going to have a lunch with one of my good friends that is a firefighter okay and so i was talking to him about um pairing with a lender to just kind of inform some firefighters about their options, you know, for mortgages and saving money and stuff like that and kind of take it to present them. So anybody done anything similar to that or have any experience with that? Police like officers, a, firefighters? I think with, with cops, we, we um, so Ed Fordyce has brought this guy who's incredible, Ed Stratton to our group. He's a lender uh that is super 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 smart and so i'm gonna i i believe he can do stuff in oklahoma i i'll connect you with him and i think he can help with that um okay as far as i know i feel like that's one of the programs i thought i heard him say i might have been okay. more policeman the fireman but yeah okay. yeah i was just curious because it's hard to get them all into you know one setting or catch them because they may get called out or whatever so I didn't know if anybody had any tactics or not. Yeah, I think I think you could do. You're talking about the tactic side of things. Sort of, um, you can do video seminars and then record it in the yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know, I know Darwin's been doing some um, house hacking seminars. Record those for the people that can attend live, and then and then sort of like then send it around or have them meet with you so they can watch the video. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. How about you, TV? Lo love your wisdom. Anything to add? Um, I think this just kind of brought extreme clarity to basically a conversation that I've been having with myself the entire week. Um, when I moved from California to Charlotte to a whole nother country getting acclimated you're going to hear a lot of no's and you're going to get a lot of rejection and that is going to help you get to yes because you have to learn a brand new culture the way everything is done is completely different um the small subtle things will matter um and just like the stuff that I have going on in, in uh, Philadelphia, when I talk to my property manager on a daily basis, when he gets frustrated and things like that, I have to have a conversation with myself that empowers me and then transfer that enthusiasm. Yeah. Um, so um, is definitely a constant thing i definitely have a playlist um so a lot like a lot of these things just clarified and cemented that i'm having the right conversation cool 
that that's actually one of the greatest byproducts of this. So like, as you're becoming more aware of it and practice it, you're, you're working on you, but you're going to be helping other people work on themselves and move forward. Right? Like how many times, you know, one of the key precepts that a buyer might have is like, Oh, you know what? That realtor just wants me to sign this deal up because they want their commission. Right. Or, you know, they tell you that they want to buy this house because they're tired of commuting for three hours each way every day and they need to spend more time with their kids. And then the inspection comes up and they're haggling, fighting over a hundred dollar inspection item, right? And it's their their fear or the need to win or or like uh, some sort of negotiation all of a sudden becomes the thing and they lose sight of their goals, right? And and now we got to like, all right, you know, you're operating on this precept. So let's get you back on your on your path. All right. All right. It's a really, it's really cool stuff. And, and the, the last sort of nugget that was shared with me that I will share with you is like, when you're doing stuff that you're thinking about doing TV, the how, how you do something is 0% important because the how stops us from taking action. The thing that's most important is to be a hundred percent intentional on doing the thing you said you want to do. I don't know how it's going to look like, don't know what it's going to look like but I'm going to make dot, 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 dot happen. And dot, dot, dot is your goal, right? I don't know how I'm going to move to Spain, but I'm hundred percent intentional moving there. If we focus on the how things will stop immediately. Right? Yeah. You know what? And sales are a little bit different there, but guess what? Human beings are the same. We're all different. We're the same. Cool. All right, my peeps, I got to check out. But in the meantime, go out there and cause and create miracles. Appreciate you all.